Lesson 2.2 Comparison Problems Using Models A model can help us solve a comparison problem by helping us visualize the amounts that are being compared. A model will help us decide if we need to multiply or subtract to solve. And there are clue words. If we need to find how many more or how many less, we'll need to use addition or subtraction to compare quantities. And if we need to find how many times as much, we'll need to use multiplication to compare quantities. If we see n more than 10 is 15, that's an addition bar model. The whole thing is 15. We have our 10 and we need to find n. If we see 7 is how many fewer than 10, or 10 is how many more than 7? We have two boxes, and that's a subtraction bar model. We're looking for the difference, n. If we see 3 times as much as n is 12, we're comparing it to this one box, n, and 3 times means the top bar is going to have 3 boxes, and all of them together will equal 12. That's a multiplication bar model. Dave weighs three times as much as Tim, his little brother. Together, they weigh 80 pounds. How much does Dave weigh? So we're trying to find how much Dave weighs. We need to use a multiplication model because of the clue words times as much. We'll let N represent the little brother Tim's weight. Using the model, we write an equation to find the value of N. So, because he's three times as much, Dave has three boxes, and Tim is just the n. And together, all of these boxes are going to equal 80. There are four boxes of n here. So, we have 4 times n is equal to 80. Well, 4 times 20 is equal to 80. So, n is equal to 20. Tim weighs 20 pounds. That's the baby brother but we need to know how much Dave weighs. And Dave weighs three times as much as Tim, so Dave weighs three times 20. That's 60 pounds. And if we add the 60 plus the 20, it does equal 80, so we know we did it correctly. So to find how many times as much, we use a multiplication model, and however many times as much is going to be how many boxes are in the top bar, and we're comparing it to that one n down below. And all together, we have four boxes. If they all equal 12, then 12 is equal to four times some number n. And to find how many more or fewer, we use an addition or subtraction model. If it says how many more, how many fewer, we can compare them one quantity in the top bar, another quantity in the bottom bar, and we're looking for the difference n. And for addition, we can do it like this. 15 is 10 more than n. The whole thing is 15. We have 10 and some amount n. 15 is equal to 10 plus n. Chris's dog Dingo weighs 50 pounds. My dog Lola weighs 22 pounds. How much more does Dingo weigh than Lola? We need to use a subtraction model because of the clue words, how much more? We'll let N represent their difference in weight. We make a box for Dingo's weight, 50 pounds. We make a box for Lola's weight, 22 pounds. We make a bracket for N showing we need to find the difference. We write an equation, 50 minus 22 is equal to N. And 50 minus 22 is equal to 28. The value of N is 28. So Dingo weighs 28 pounds more than Lola. The different length boxes represent the, the weight of each dog. And this bracket represents the difference. We need to make sure we're using the correct bar graph and the correct factors. So take a look at this multiplication problem. Tala weighs 63 pounds, which is 9 times more than she weighed at birth. 
what was Tala's birth weight? Well, her birth weight is going to be N, and she weighs 63 pounds, which is nine times more than that, so we make nine boxes that equal 63. 63 is equal to nine times N. You know your multiplication facts. You know nine times seven is equal to 63, so we know that Tala weighed seven pounds when she was born. We just have one bar that's split into nine equal parts. But when we change the wording of the problem to be Tala weighs nine times more than her baby sister Sophia, together they weigh 70 pounds, what does Sophia weigh? Now we're looking for Sophia's weight. We're going to let N be Sophia's weight. We make nine boxes for Tala because she's nine times more. We make one box for Sophia because she represents N. That's 10 boxes in all, 9, 10. They equal 70. 70 is equal to 10 times N. And 10 times 7 is 70. So we know that N is equal to 7, and Sophia weighs 7 pounds. So she must be a new baby sister. Do you see the difference when we just were finding how many 9s were in 63 comparing to together they weighed 70 pounds. Now we have Sophia as another bar down here, another box. And because together they weighed 70 pounds, we made her boxes nine for the nine times more than one more for Sophia's one box N. So when we're comparing with multiplication, we're not just gonna have one bar, we're going to have a bar that represents each person and it's going to equal whatever they are together. See? An animal shelter found homes for six times as many dogs as cats. In all, they found homes for 35 dogs and cats. How many more dogs found homes than cats? So we have to be careful. This is a multi-step problem. There are several steps to this problem and we need to multiply to compare, then subtract to compare. And we're gonna let N equal cats. So we have a bar for dogs, a bar for cats, and because it's six times as many dogs, we have six boxes. We made six boxes for dogs, one box for cats, that's seven boxes in all, and they equal 35. We have 35 is equal to 7 times n. And we know that 7 times 5 is equal to 35, so n is equal to 5. So we know 5 cats found homes, but we're looking for how many more dogs found homes than cats. So, so far, all we found out was that 5 cats found homes, and we're looking for how many more dogs found homes than cats. Well, we know there was a total of 35 dogs and cats, so the next thing we need to do is make a subtraction bar model. We know in all 35 dogs and cats found homes, we now know there were five cats. That means the difference is 30, and that's how many dogs there were. Our equation would be a subtraction equation, 35 dogs and cats minus the five cats means 30 dogs found homes. But remember, we need to find how many more dogs found homes than cats. So. Now we need to find how many more dogs than cats we need to subtract again. We have 30 dogs, we have 5 cats, we need to know how many more dogs than cats. We do 30 minus the 5 cats is equal to 25 more dogs than cats. We had to multiply, then we had to subtract, then subtract again, so that was a multi-step word problem. In the subtraction model, we're comparing the quantity in the first box to the quantity in the second box to find their difference as n, like 3 is n fewer than 5. In the multiplication model, we're comparing the number times as much, so if it's 3 times as much, we have 3 boxes up here. 
And we're comparing that number times as much for the amount of boxes in the top bar to one box for one N in the bottom bar or bottom box. Now here we have a problem about direction. To get to the mall, Lou first drove five miles east of his home, then six miles north, then he turned west and drove 10 miles. Finally, he turned north and drove three miles to the mall. So how far north of Lou's home is the mall? So we can draw a diagram showing the directions he drove. We're only going to count the distances he drove north. So here's his home, and here we have directions. And you can remember the directions as north is up, south is down, and we go across. You look, it spells we. So you know that's west and that's east. So it says that he drove five miles east. Well, that's not important. We only want north. Then six miles north. Ah, that's important. Next, he turned west and drove 10 miles. That's not important. We don't care about west. Finally, he turned north and drove three miles. That is important. He went north. Using our diagram, we can make one square. The distance of one square going across would be one mile. So here's Lou's home. He went five miles east, so we go across five squares. Then he went six miles north, so that's six squares up. Then he turned west and drove 10 miles. And then finally he turned north and drove three miles. So we're only going to count the ones that are going north, the six and the three. Six plus three is equal to nine. The mall is nine miles north of Lou's home. And drawing the diagram helped us to visualize it. Plus, it helps to remember north is up, south is down, and we go across. Lou built a fenced dog run that is four yards long and six yards wide. He placed posts at every corner and at every yard along the length and width. How many posts did he use? So we're going to say this is one yard, okay, because it's four yards, one, two, three, four. That's how long it is. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six wide. So we know he's got a post at each corner. We've got those four. But now he placed a post at every yard going around. We draw a diagram on some grid paper and place a dot at each corner. Then we draw dots around the perimeter for each yard. Now we can count them. We can start up here so we don't lose our place. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. By drawing the diagram, the picture, we know Lou used twenty fence posts. In our next lesson, 2.3, we're going to use place value to help. I hope I'll see you there. Keep trying. Bye.